Hi everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Today is Friday, March 8th, and this is floss tube number 118. And yes, it has been way too long since my last video, probably like almost a month and a half. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to stay away so long. I know that's becoming a, a common um, refrain, but you know, life is busy. Life is busy. Nothing's wrong, nothing's bad, just busy. Um, so anyway, I have, I have a ton of, <laughs> ton of stitching. I have so much stitching to show because, um, it's been a long time. So let's just like jump right in. Um, I've got a lot. I've got a lot. So I have one fully finished object to show. So, um, I'll start with that and then I'll show you all of my finishes that are not fully finished. I have so, so many things I need to fully finish. It's really, it's, it's the worst it's ever been. My, um, my box of shame is, is overflowing. It's now just a box and piles, piles of shame. Um, but anyway, I did finish one thing. It was probably because it was an easy thing to finish. But anyway, um, this is Pisces by Miss Nora Corbett. Um, this is her, so Nora Corbett designs under Mirabilia, um, but she also does release some designs just under Nora Corbett. Same designer, same kind of feel, but these, um, these tend to be a little bit smaller, um, and a little faster to stitch in my humble opinion, not always, but most of the time. Um, so this is how Pisces looks on the chart. You can see I definitely did something different with the fabric here. So I did, um, this is a 28 count Monaco and I dyed this myself, but I did use all of the called for DMC floss and the bead pack. Um, so she is stitched exactly as charted. Um, and I think she's just absolutely gorgeous. And I have decided I want to do all of the Zodiac signs um, from Nora Corbett. I had already done Aquarius previously. And so I decided to start Pisces um, when Pisces season came around. And I'm going to do each subsequent Zodiac girl as we enter that Zodiac sign. Um, and I think I'm going to finish them all. They're all like approximately the same size, give or take like a few stitches. So I think I'm going to finish them all this way. And then I'll have 12 of these beautiful ladies hanging up on my wall. Um, these are quick stitches. This, the actual stitching on this took maybe five days. The beading, whoo, the beading took a while. There, <laughs> there are so many beads on her, like, especially up here at the top, um, in the, in the fish, in her headpiece. Um, it took a long time to bead her. And some of that was because I didn't have my, my tools. I couldn't find my beading mat. Um, so I need to order one of those, but, uh, just a lot, a lot of beads, but obviously worth it. Right. I mean, I don't know if you can see all those beads, but they certainly enhance the beauty of a Nora Corbett design. So I'm basically, um, I already, I was already quite fond of Mirabilia, Nora Corbett and stitching, um, those beautiful designs, but now I'm like really in a rabbit hole. <laughs> so, um, it's taking everything in me not to start like three of them right away. I'm almost positive. I will have it started at least one more, um, before the next video. And then I will be starting Aries um, when that rolls around. I think that's, I think Aries season starts like March 20th, somewhere around there. So I'll be starting that one later this month. Anyway, there's Pisces, my only fully finished object. So um, I also finished a bunch of things. I just didn't fully finish them. And some of these, I feel like I stitched so long ago because I did, I stitched them five or six weeks ago. <laughs> um, this finish is my memes, my heart. It's designed by Allie of Misfit Stitches. Um, she designs under the company name, uh, Light of the Moon Studios. And so she's released a couple of, of small patterns. 
um, I hope this is showing up okay since I don't have anything behind it. But this was um, a cute little pattern she released uh, right before Valentine's Day. And it says, you're the person I send my reels to. The, the, the uh, pattern she released actually said, you are the person I send my memes to. But then she also included um, this alternate, you're the person I send my reels to. And since I'm on Instagram sending reels to friends all day long, uh, it just fit. <laughs> it fit. So I stitched this with DMC Etoile. So you probably won't be able to tell, but it's very, it's very subtly sparkly. And I stitched this on a 14 count um, perforated paper that I had left over from like a Mill Hill kit. It's kind of weird. I don't know if the paper was supposed to be a solid blue, but you might be able to tell it's either like rubbed off or modeled. I don't know if it's just like a miss dye, um, like when they were dyeing the paper, or if it was supposed to be like a blue modeling. And I don't know if you can even see it, but it does have um, a, an effect. There's an effect on that paper. Uh, but anyway, these are not the exact called for colors, but like in the spirit of the colors of the original. And this was a super quick um, stitch. And I am going to send this to my friend Jenny because I possibly bombard her with memes more than any, anyone else uh, that I chat with on Instagram. So that was My Memes, My Heart by Allie. Um, I will try to link everybody below who I mention. Um, Allie does film floss tubes under misfit stitches, and then she, uh, her design is uh, Light of the Moon Studios. Okay, so then I finished, again, this was around Valentine's Day. I finished a cute little pattern called Quilted Together by my friend Marissa. She is M Kissa Creations on Etsy. Um, and I think she's just M Kissa on uh, Floss 2. And this was uh, stitched with all the called for DMC floss. And this is a mystery fabric. I have no idea what it is. I mean, it's even weave, but I don't know, like, I, I don't remember where I got it. I don't know who dyed it. I, I literally have no idea. Um, so it's just this pretty pinkish fabric that I've had sitting in stash forever. And um, this was like a really quick finish. I can't even remember. It maybe took three days. I don't know if maybe just two, but super, super cute. So that's Quilted Together by M Kissa Creations. And then I stitched, uh, I had an impromptu uh, Valentine's Day start. So my friend, Sarah, <laughs> I'm just like, my friend, my friend, my friend. Um, but I am friends with uh, other floss tubers and with people who do design. So um, I really do consider these people my friends. So anyway, my friend, uh, Sarah, she is on floss tube as I swear I'm, in, I swear I am stitching. And she sent me a little like Galentine's Day card. And I think I got it. I think I actually got it on Galentine's Day. Isn't that February 13th? I think, I think that's actually like the official day. Anyway, I got it um, the day before Valentine's Day. And she just sent me a sweet little card with um, this pattern included. It's um, Bindi Stitchy My Moon Valentine. And so I just impromptu was like, all right, let's do it. Let's, you know let's stitch it. It's, it's a 37 by 37 tiny little thing. And it took like, uh, one and a half, uh, stitching sessions. So I actually stitched this on the same, uh, piece of fabric as my quilted together. And look how little this is. And I think this is a 32 count Lugana. So yeah, this is, this is the this is how small Michelle's pattern is, but isn't it cute? I, I love, she got so much detail into such a small little pattern. So this is My Moon Valentine, just adorable. I did make some color changes. I just grabbed some floss from Stash. So you can tell like Michelle's border is done differently. I used just a variegated floss from Stash and I love how it turned out. I think it came out so cute. And it's just like, it's like a little postage stamp. I mean, it's bigger than a postage stamp, but it's just so little. 
I don't know how I'm going to finish these. Like uh, maybe a little pillow, maybe a really little pillow. I don't know. I don't know. But those were super fun stitches around Valentine's Day. I know we're like way past that now, but um, it, it was fun to be like kind of festive and, and stitching on something like seasonally appropriate during that time. Um, okay, so then I got a big finish. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I finished a stitch along. I finished, and I've already posted this on Instagram, so you might've seen it. I finished the Castle Homecoming Stitch Along from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This stitch along, um, the final release was in February. And I actually finished the stitch along in February. This is the, I feel like it's not the first time, but it's maybe the second time I have finished a stitch along like on time. Um, because I did finish the 2021 Modern Folk Embroidery uh, stitch along. I did finish that in December of the same, like of that year. Um, I think it was 20, I'm sure it was 2021. I need to get that framed. That's another like thing sitting in my box of shame. Um, anyway, I finished, I finished the Castle Homecoming stitch along from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery and it is freaking adorable. So here it is. Um, this is on a 32 count Lugana from Mystic Fabrics. The color is called Sweet Treat. I don't know if this is a color you can actually get. Um, I got it in a, a Halloween box from Autumn Lane Stitchery, I believe, a couple years ago. Um, but anyway, it's just this, this beautiful like aqua minty color. And I stitched with a lot of the called for DMC, but I did substitute metallics like just whenever like the the spirit moved me <laughs> so um I usually stuck in like kind of the same color but just put a metallic in um and then I did make a couple of color changes like my dragon colors are quite different down here and then the princess I made princess peach so I did make a lot of changes to her coloring but otherwise I think it's very true to um the overall look and feel of the stitch along so so cute. Really a lot of stitching in this stitch along. Not all frosted pumpkins are this dense. Um, usually I think they're not this dense. I feel like this was like, I've done a few of their other stitch alongs and I don't, I, I usually don't end up finishing them, but I do like to start them. Um, and I don't think they're generally this dense. This was, this one was dense like this, um, this castle and this grass took a while. This tree, oh, it took forever. It was, it was a lot of stitching. I mean, it, it was still like totally manageable to do in the month. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of stitching, but it, it looks so great. I love it. I love the border up top. I did sub everything in that border to make, um, well, not everything. I subbed all the flowers to make them sparkly, which you probably cannot tell but those are all subbed with metallics. And that is Castle Homecoming from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It's adorable. Ignore my dirt down here. I need to see if I can get that out. I think it's dirt, but I'm actually more afraid it's tea and coffee dye um, from my iron and it's probably not coming out, but I'm gonna try and see if I can get that out before I frame this, I hope. <laughs> Okay, what else? I, I'm not even done. I'm not even done with the finishes, believe it or not. I think I just have one more. Yeah, I have one more. So you can see I had several finishes, but Castle Homecoming and Pisces were my big ones. Otherwise, I was just doing really small like SAFs, start and finish, SAF. Um, I do love a good small pattern. I love to start it and just like commit to it and finish it. So I have one more small finish. This is um, Audiobook Lover by Abby X Stitch. So she posted this on Instagram and I was like, immediate yes, immediate yes. Sorry, the camera might have just been shaking. Arlo just bumped into the tripod. Watch out, buddy. So um, <laughs> this was, so I ran over to her Etsy and this was very reasonable. I think it was maybe under $4. 
Um, and it was a super fast stitch. I used the called for DMC. This is a 14 count Charles Craft Ada that I got from Michaels. They sell um, three colors. Well, Arlo, stop bumping the camera, please. <laughs> they sell three colors of Ada. Um, well, not every Michaels, but like I've seen it at, at, I've seen them at many Michaels. They have a purpley pink one. They have a bluey green one, and then they have an orangey tan one. They're actually, I mean, they're they're subtle, but they're really quite pretty. And they're 14 count Ada, so they're super easy to stitch on. And it's just nice to have something with a little bit of like color and um, oomph to it instead of just, you know, kind of a plain fabric. So this was really quick and fun to stitch, and I love it. Audiobook Lover by Abby X Stitch. Please don't step on my Pisces. That's my fault. I did I did throw it on the floor. That's that's on me. Um, okay, so those are all my finishes. So <laughs> whew, I have some whips. Whip is W I P work in progress. So I have one that I'm gonna have to insert a picture because I forgot to film a little like clip before I sent it off. But I am doing an ink circles round robin with a few ladies. I'm uh, doing one with um, Julie from Julie and Stitches, Miriam from Marumi Crafts, and Tara from what I, I haven't figured out if it's Wild Woman or Wheeled Woman. I've heard it. I think I've heard people say it both ways. I should probably ask Tara how to say that. Um, Wild Woman Crafts. I'm going to link them below. So we are calling, I think we're called the Rogue Round Robin Stitchers. So we um, were too late to like get in on the uh, round ink circles round robin that was being hosted by Julicious and um we kind of just like we I think it was Miriam like had a, a call out on Instagram and was like hey does anyone want to jump on a ink circles round robin and I messaged her like yes me 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 and so she got together like the group of four and then we found out like we maybe were a little it doesn't matter we just decided like hey we've got us four like let's do it so the Ink Circles Round Robin idea, like originally uh, came from Michelle at Bendy Stitchy Designs. Uh, she started this and all you do is you pick an ink circles and you stitch a fourth of it and then you send it on to, um, there's a group of four and you all send your whip through and everybody stitches a fourth and then you get a completed ink circles at the end. Um, <laughs> they... Um, that way you don't have to stitch because um, ink circles aren't all, but um, generally for this round robin, you do the the kind of like mandala designs where it's um, it's a mandala. So if you were to stitch the whole thing, it could get a little bit repetitive. So this way you only have to stitch a little bit of it and then you're stitching on other people's um, designs they picked and so you get like some variety. So all that to say... <laughs> I chose Reflections of Scotland for this round robin. So I will insert a picture um, if I haven't already, but this was my fourth. Um, this is a 32 count linen. It's um, from the dyer Nic Nicholas Flamel. This was a set of three linens called the Bronte Sisters. So um, the three linens are not individually named. So I don't know like what this is called other than it's one of the Bronte sisters and I'm stitching this with Gloriana silk and the color is I believe uh, because I've already mailed it off <laughs> um I believe it's Highland Gardens dark because it that color also came um like in a lighter version so it's Highland Gardens dark it's just it's so beautiful um and this was really really quick to stitch and it was really fun to stitch so I have already mailed that off and am waiting um to eventually get that back completed. I won't have to stitch any more on it. But I did get um, Tara's piece. So let me show you that because I've, I have not finished my section, but I've gotten a good start. They do stitch up really quick. So this is her piece. Um, let me make sure I'm holding it up right. Her fabric is gorgeous. So obviously she did this section here and this is my start over here on my section. Let me 
just get out. So this is Elegant Squid. And the flosses are, funny enough, I think these are the colors I chose for my modern folk embroidery um, stitch along that I haven't ever started. <laughs> it's Forbidden Fiber Company River of Life and Live and Die LA Pretty Flamingo. So these are her flosses. And then let me see if she wrote down what this fabric is because this fabric is just gorgeous. 32 count linen from Mystic Fabrics. God, I love Mystic Fabrics. The color is Aurora from Mystic Fabrics. It is so pretty. It's just this beautiful purpley teal aqua. It's gorgeous. So that is Elegant Squid. I will get that finished and sent on soon. I think we're giving ourselves like we're we're really super like low key about it. We're not rushing or anything. Um, I think we're give you know, we're going to take the full year. So it's like every three months we should be sending, but like these don't take three months to complete. So we might send sooner depending on if all of us are done. Like it's, it's really like a low pressure, low key kind of thing. Um, okay. So then I worked on, I think I showed this last video, uh, but I did some more work on the chopping mall from Witchy Stitcher. This was a super old whip. And I have not, I had not touched it in a long time. So I'm really happy that I got this back out and I got some work on this. Um, I did, I primarily just finished like all of this, whoop, all of this roof up here. And then I hadn't finished the Freddy Krueger room. So I did go ahead and get in there and finish that. So my roof and my top floor are done. There are three floors to this mall. So... That is all stitched with DMC and DMC H12, all the called for colors. And I'm, I had a lot of fun working on this. I actually worked on this way longer than I meant to just because I was having, I was having fun and I was just determined to get that roof done, which I did. So old, old stitch along, chopping mall from the witchy stitcher. <sighs> okay, so. <laughs> Also, um, beginning of February, I started um, a pattern from Sprouting Lupine. So you might remember last video, I had finished uh, Luna, was it called Luna Ma? No, Luna Love. I had finished Luna Love from Sprouting Lupine. I did a color conversion. So um, I had also really liked this pattern called My Mushy Valentine from Sprouting Lupine. And my friend Victor was like, I want to stitch that too. Do you want to sell it with me, stitch along with me? And I said, yes, yes, let's do it. So we decided, I think February 1st, we started. And I got like some really decent progress on this. Um, this is also that Bronte Sisters fabric from Nicholas Flamel, but this is a different one from the ink circles. So this is a different, of the three fabrics, this is one a different one than what I stitched my Reflections of Scotland on. That one's uh, like green and blue, and this one's like a murky, purpley gray. So anyway, this is how far I got on my Mushy Valentine, and I'm using all the called for floss, except for there is um, a sparkle floss in, in her pattern. She calls for using one strand of DMC, I think it's 814, um, one strand of 814 and one strand of like a Krynik floss, which of course I didn't have, but I realized eight, DMC 814 has an etoile. So I just grabbed the etoile of 814. So I think I have the exact same look, but um, otherwise I'm using like the exact called for DMC. And this is looking so good, I think. I think it looks amazing. I did commit to a 2024, so I should probably get back to this <laughs> and finish this before the end of the year. It's not that I have like tons more stitching to go. I just, you know, I got sidetracked, but I think it's looking so great. So this is my Mushy Valentine by Sprouting Lupine, who I just love. And this needle minder, David Rose from Schitt's Creek, it says, I'm trying very hard not to connect with people right now. And I got that from Colleen at Rebel Stitcher. I don't know if she still has them, but I got that from her. It was a while ago. Um, okay. So I did start something new. <laughs> um, I started Rebecca Nurse by The Primitive Hair. This is something I've had in stash 
forever and I wanted to stitch it forever. And I um, was in a little group chat and I, it, it came up or I can't remember how it came up, but I was like, I, I want to stitch that. Let's, and I convinced like a few other people, they were like, yeah, I have it too. But let's, so we kind of like decided we were going to start it. So of course the time to start it rolled around and I was like, eh, I don't even know if I'm in the mood to stitch that now, but I sucked it up and I, and I started it and I, I had fun stitching it. I'm, I'm not like saying anything against it. I just, you know, when, sometimes when you're like, yeah, let's do it. And then like a week later you're like, I don't even know if I'm in the mood for that. But anyway, I did start Rebecca Nurse by the Primitive Hair. I am using the called for DMC floss and I'm stitching this on, um, this is an X G designs fabric. It's a 36 count and I don't, remember what uh the color is called it, it, i've had it for years um ignore this down here this is um a piece i decided not to continue and i just didn't rip it out yet um but you can see this is a small little pattern i, I am stitching on 36 count but it's actually quite small and so what i really focused on was filling um outlining all of the house and the snow, like getting everything outlined so that all I have to do is fill in. Um, and I think I, I did, I still have to get some trees, but otherwise I've really got it at a good place for fill in. And so that brings me to um, kind of a tangent, um, but just to like throw it out there, I am attending Stitch North weekend two. I'm so excited. This is gonna be my first like big retreat. I've been to a local like Denver area retreat, but it was not um, a big shabam. It was like a little private retreat and there was a very small number of us, I think maybe 30 of us. And it was also literally a mile and a half from my house. So it didn't really feel like, I mean, it was wonderful, but it didn't feel like I was like going on a big like retreat adventure because I was literally going down the street, but it was amazing. Um, but anyway, I'm going, this Stitch North will be like my first, like I'm flying somewhere, like going to a big retreat. So I'm so excited. Um, if you are going to weekend two, let me know, please. I know several people who are going already, but I keep finding out like someone else is going to be there. I'm like, no way they're going to weekend two. Like that's crazy. So if you're going, let me know. Um, and I can't wait to, to see everybody, but, um, all that to say, <laughs> I thought this would be like a perfect um, type of project to bring somewhere like Stitch North um, because I've got it all outlined. So now it's just fill in. So um, I don't know how much stitching I will get done, but I thought I'd better bring some stuff where I don't have to like stare at a pattern or count. Um, all I have to do is like grab DMC 377 and just, you know, go to town filling in this house. So I've got, I think I might be bringing this. I have um, Miss Bingley's library from Plum Street that I think could be a really good one too because it's got this huge house to fill in. Um, I'm going to look through and kind of see like, I, I don't know what else I'm going to bring, but that's, that's what I was thinking with this one. So I would have kept going on this, but I actually like intentionally just got the outlining done and then stopped so that I would have some good retreat fill in. I figure even this would be really good just for the plane because um, I don't want to be juggling like trying to stare at a pattern on a plane either. And I think the plane is going to be like three and a half hours. So, um, you know, this would be a good like nice like fill in easy, just a couple colors of DMC. You get it. You get it. Um, okay. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking for a while. All right, I have three more stitching whips to show you. Three more, and then then we'll be done with the stitching, I think. So, um, all right. After I finished Pisces, I was still like feeling the zodiac. So I got out an older whip, another stitch along I had started. Um, and this one I I had never thought I would keep up. I actually started this one like in the middle like it was I think I started it like several months into the stitch along so this is um this zodiac stitch along by tiny modernist and um so 
I dyed my own 14 count Ada for this. It's huge. It's a big stitch along and then I decided to do it on 14 count Ada. So it's like extra big. Um, so I dyed this myself. I love it. And I'm using like mostly the called for DMC for the um, actual signs. But I changed the border. The border called for like a couple colors of DMC. And I changed it all to DMC Diamond, which is a metallic floss. So I'm using three colors of that in the border. So my border is all metallic and sparkly. And I actually got so much done on this. Um, so I started, I jumped in on Leo. So like I said, I jumped in like halfway through this stitch along. <laughs> um, so I did Leo, put it away for a while, got it out a few months later, did Capricorn, put it away for ages. And then I got it out. And I think I worked over here to Aquarius or maybe I did Virgo at some point. I don't know. Um, I don't remember which order I did these two, but at some point I did get into these two. Um, and I did always try to work on them like during the, the zodiac sign. And so that's why I like worked my way over and did Aquarius. Um, so this round I got it out and I did Pisces, but I did all this border. Um, I had a little bit of the border started on Aquarius, but not much. So I actually got in here and did all this border, all this border here, all this, and then also all of Pisces. So I did get a lot of uh, stitching in on this. It is a lot of stitching to do, but it looks so cool. So I'm hoping I will be better this year and keep up. So maybe when I'm starting that next Nora Corbett Aries, I will come back to this and get Aries out here and then keep going. And I've built in like three little breaks for myself there. So it's humongous, but I think it looks amazing and I love it. Oh, one other change I did make, just throwing that out there. Like I said, I'm, I'm using almost all the called for colors. I did change the skin tone on Virgo. I think it called for just like the, I think it called for like this color, which is, I think it's DMC 712. And I was like, that's just a little too pale. So I just changed her skin tone there. Um, One more? No, two more, I think. Yeah, two more, two more. Okay. Whew, I'm getting hot. Um, my sister crocheted this for me, by the way, um, this cardigan, and I love it. It is so comfy and it is so beautiful. We're, but I'm a little hot. Um, anyway, so I joined another Ink Circles round robin <laughs> after I committed and joined the other one. Um, a couple of friends like mentioned they were kind of feeling like they had missed out. And so we kind of were just like, well, let's just start one. Like, let's find, you know, I think there were, there were three of us. And I was like, let me ask my friend. I think she wanted to do one too. And then all of a sudden we had four. So we are doing a, an Ink Circles Round Robin. It's um, me, my friend, Amy Gable Stitcher, my friend, Karen from Fox and Rabbit, and my friend, Sarah from Memphis, Sarah. We are doing a global Ink Circles Round Robin. I'm so excited. So I stitched my fourth of my pattern it stitched so fast I'm telling you these these ink circles if you get the ones that I think they're around like 115 by 115 they stitch up really fast so I'm doing I chose lace flowers but I changed the colors so I went to my stash and I found it's seven colors so I just like found seven silks that I thought were like working well together and this is a, a 30, I think it's a 32 count. It's an R&R &R fabrics. I think it's, um, it's old. Like I found it, I actually found it at a thrift store. It's an old piece of R&R. &R. It is 32 count and it's called, it's dark espresso is, is the color, but that was probably 10 years ago. So I don't know if dark espresso still looks like this or not. It might. Anyway, I did my fourth and it took me just like a day, it, I, a, a long day. Like I stitched all day long. It was my day off. I stitched all day long, but it did, it was, it was quick. So these are the, the colors I chose and they're just random silk. It's like dinky dye silks, NPI, just like random silks that I just have in my stash. And I don't know if you can tell, but, um, I did not split my 
my pattern like perfectly in four. Um, I actually like drew lines to try to like, <laughs> let me get this situated, um, to try to make it to where you weren't having to like cut off in the middle of stitching a motif. So I kind of, it's still one fourth of the pattern, but I kind of like did squiggly lines around motifs instead of like drawing a line straight down the center here, I just went ahead and like had you do the whole thing. But over here where that motif repeats, I didn't have you do that half. So the next person will do like that whole motif. I, I don't know if it makes sense. It's still like exactly one fourth of the pattern, but that way you're not like having to split motifs in half. At least as much as I could avoid that I did. So anyway, I think it looks so good. Um, I think I'm going to send that off to Amy next. I'm not sure. I don't know if we've decided yet, but that will be going, that will be going off somewhere. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about those ink circles. They're really fun. If you, um, feel like, you know, you want to do an ink circles around Robin, I encourage you to just like find a group of friends and do it. It's super fun. Um, and Michelle Bandy Stitchy has encouraged people to do it like on their own because she did a whole organization and, you know, like matched up groups and, and did all of that. Um, but then of course people missed out and she's like, just make your own group, just do it. Like you don't need my permission just go for it. So find three friends and do it. It's super fun. All right. I have, oh, I forgot to show you guys. The Zodiac Signs um, by Tiny Modernist. Here's what the completed piece is going to look like. I totally forgot to show that while I was showing my whip. Um, and so, oh my God, it's like I'm so out of practice on floss tube. Here's what Chopping Mall is going to look like, except for I have written on this a little bit. So, and I did make some adjustments on that. Okay, and one more one more whip. I forgot to bring in, forgot to bring in the picture of like what this is going to look like. So I'll just insert a picture. Um, for St. Patrick's Day, I was feeling festive and I grabbed this old, I've had this pattern. I think this came out in 2021. I've had it forever. Um, I grabbed Shamrock Alphabet Sampler by Jennifer Whistle Stop Stitcher. And I started this, um, last night. It's stitching up really quick already. And this is a, an old piece of like 28 count linen. I don't know the dyer. It was, I found it at like a craft thr thrift store. It's called Autumn Gathering, but I don't know who the dyer was. It's just a really pretty gold. And this is a DMC. I think it's 4047. It's a DMC color variations. So it's got like various shades of like Kelly green. And then this is a DMC metallic floss. I think it's 3821. Um, just a simple gold floss. So, and I do have the called for Threadworks Bradley balloons for the rainbow um, word down here that I'm going to use. So I, this is, um I'm almost to the bottom and then the top's like right here. So it's going to be about this size of my hoop um, when it's all said and done. And it's stitched up really, really quick and it looks great. I've stitched another similar pattern from Jen. Um, she had one around Christmas time and I've stitched that and it was really fun. So I knew like I was going to enjoy doing this. Um, and like I said, I was just feeling festive. I was, I was feeling the season. So I will hopefully have this done soon. And then, um, I could just go start all the mirabilia because that's what I really want to stitch on right now. All right. That is all my stitching. I know it was a ton, but like I said, it's been six weeks. So, you know. That makes sense, right? <laughs> um, all right, that's all the stitching. I'm not gonna go into haul. I, I have had some haul, um, but this video is gonna be long enough. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through it. Um, I was gifted a one, two, three stitch gift card for my birthday. So I did um kit up a bunch of mirabilias, which also has fueled my passion for them right now. So I spot like a bunch of beads. And a bunch of Karen water lilies because I generally like dye my own fabric or, or find my fabric elsewhere. But um, I had a bunch of patterns that I, I haven't like, you know, gotten everything together for them. So 
I used, used that to buy a bunch of water lilies and beads so I can stitch those. Um, I've bought a couple of PDF patterns. Most of those I have started right away. So I showed you those as my like finishes or whips. Um, and I do have a market order. It should be arriving tomorrow. And I was really good. I only ordered two things. And I do plan to start those really quickly. So those might even be whips in my next, um, my next video. I tried really hard to like restrain myself and I just, I have so much. I have so many whips. I have so much stash. I have so many kitted up things. I have so much I can stitch. So I'm trying to be just like so selective on things and try not, I'm trying not to buy anything unless it's something I can see myself starting like really soon. So there's so many things I want to buy that I'm like, someday I'm going to stitch that, right? Like there's, you know, like everything Kathy Barrick releases, I'm like, I would stitch that. I want to stitch that someday. But do I want to start it like this week? Probably not. So I'm trying to just be more restrained and say like, those aren't going anywhere. When I really want to start that thing, I can go get it then. And I'm trying to just buy things that it's like, I could see myself really stitching it like right away. Um, so I don't have a lot of haul and, um, I don't know why I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. That's kind of what I'm doing lately. No judgment to anybody who's on a no buy or anybody who's buying whatever they want, when they want. I I've been that person. <laughs> I have been that person before. Um, but I'm feeling hi, Bubby. <laughs> He's like, why, why do you sit in here and talk to yourself? Um, I've been that person who's bought every single thing I will ever want to stitch and it's great, but I'm just feeling really overwhelmed. I have so much. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to exercise a little restraint. That's all. Hello. Hello, my precious, my precious dove. All right. We're going to talk about books and then we'll be done. So, um, if you don't care to hear about book talk, you can leave now and you're not going to miss out on any stitching stuff. We're just going to talk about some books and then I'll wrap the video up. So obviously it's been six weeks. I've read a lot of books. Um, my job, I, I think I touched on this last time. Um, I've, I've started working again, um, mostly full time. And the type of work I'm doing, I actually can listen to audiobooks or podcasts or like music if I so choose. And so I actually feel like I've read even more than typical because I have all day to listen to audiobooks. I mean, some, some days it's just a couple hours, but some days it's like four, four to six hours that I, I could listen to an audiobook. So, um, and I listen to, okay, thank you. I listen to audiobooks sped up. So I can like a lot of my audiobooks are like eight hours by the time it's all said and done. So I'm I'm finishing one every couple of days. All that to say, I've, I've read a ton. I'm not gonna go through everything because it it would it'd be a long it'd be a long time it'd be a long time. So um, I'm not gonna go through all the things like anything that just wasn't really sticking out as like in interesting to talk to. I just I, I scratched it off the list. Like, you know, those kind of mediocre reads. So we'll just talk about like the, the standouts. Okay. Can you get down please? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and, um, let me grab my little stack of books over here. These aren't going to be in like particular order, but we'll see. <clears throat> so the first thing, the big thing was House of Flame and Shadow, the third Crescent City book from Sarah J. Moss. This came out on January 30th, the day after my birthday. And you can see this a big, it's a big man jamma. These are big, these are big books. Her books are huge. This one's 800 something pages. Um, all right. So this was the third book in the Crescent City series. Obviously I can't really go into much of anything without being like spoiler city. Um, this book, I, the, the reception, the reviews for this have been a little like, all over the place and I'm still not entirely sure like how I'm feeling about it. I enjoyed it. I, I didn't hate it. I had, I had a good time with it. I just don't know. Like, did I love it? Was it just fine? Like, I'm not sure. It's so hard. I get so jaded because 
or not jaded. That's not the right word. Um, it's so hard to like parse my feelings about her books because like you and like they're so anticipated and like I've been like hyped up for this book for months and like you know it's like midnight release parties like this big this big like atmosphere and you know you're like is someone gonna die is this gonna happen is this gonna happen and so there's all this like hype and so as I'm reading it, I'm just like devouring it, trying not trying to avoid spoilers. And then it's like, how did I actually feel about the book? I'm not sure. Um, so I, I think I need to reread it with like a little bit of distance and perspective and decide. I think I did like it. I think it was very good. But I know that um, there's been some criticism. Some people like uh, were not super excited about it. Um, and there are various reasons for that, that again are spoilers if I really wanted to, to get into them. But people had, um, there were all these like fan theories going around, uh, before the release of this book that people were like, I think this means this, I think this is going to happen. I think this. And so then those people like were very disappointed when this big thing didn't happen. Um, that thing was never promised. It was, it was never told that we were going to get that. It was just people like just assumed or like theorized that we would. And so then they were disappointed. So I think that's some of like the disappointment, but some people also were just like, it just, just, it just wasn't it, just wasn't it. So, um, this is an urban fantasy, paranormal fantasy series. So Sarah J Maas has traditionally written like, um, more historical kind of setting, um, fairy magical kind of fantasy and this her third series Crescent City um, is more feels like it's more set in a world like ours like people have electricity cell phones tv like that kind of stuff but then there's still magic there's still um, the fae and like shifters all that like stuff so it's it's a paranormal like urban type of fantasy um, which I think is cool that she's like tried something different, went in a different direction. I very much have enjoyed this series. And I really, I do think I like the first two books more than this one, but I still love this one as, at least as much as I, as I processed my feelings. Like I said, I need to reread it, but I enjoyed it. And I recommend all of her series. I think they're great. <laughs> all right, so... Um, I read a contemporary romance. This is, um, Chloe Lee's Two Wrongs Make a Right. This was an author who I've heard about, but hadn't read from. And then I, um, she had a holiday novel come out. It's called The Mistletoe Motive. And I kept hearing it was really good. So I did get that book and, um, on audio and I loved it. It was so good. It was, it was great. So then I was like, I actually already own this book um, randomly. I had found it like at a used bookstore for like a really good price. So I was like, you know, I want to read more from this author. So I went and grabbed this book off my bookshelf and it was so great. I loved, I loved this. And now I'm like, okay, this author is like, this is an author for me. So I bought like a whole bunch of her other books um, and I will be getting to them eventually. But um, I just really like her, her writing style. So it's contemporary romance, but she, um, she usually has like some disability rep, some like neurodivergent rep in her books. Um, I believe the author herself is neurodivergent. Um, I swear I read that. Oh yeah. She's, she, her books often feature characters who are neurodivergent like herself. Um, she also will have, so like her characters will also have um, other thing like usually one of them is like autistic um they'll have issues with like anxiety I think um one of her books I'm going to read one of the characters is deaf or uses is hearing impaired um so I just I appreciate like the diversity um and just the representation that she does and I feel like I haven't heard anything about her being like problematic um what I've only read a couple of things from her, but I feel like she's very like respectful and tastefully like addressing these issues. Um, like to me, it's pretty clear that she has like sensitivity readers and like really makes an effort to like, you know, do it right. So I really appreciate that. Her books are so funny. Um, they're steamy and, and sexy and just, they're so good. Like 
I've only read a couple, but I just feel like they're, they've been so good. So this one is a fake dating plot. So it's actually um, like a reimagining of Much Ado About Nothing, but it features um, Jamie and B. So they're um, B's twin sister and Jamie's roommate are dating. And so they decide to set these two up because they think they're just going to be perfect for each other but they get off on like the wrong foot. Um, they have a little bit of like a misunderstanding and they do not like each other. They're both like immediately like this person sucks. Um, but their um, sibling and roommate respectively, like try to push them together again. So they're like, you know what? Let's, let's teach them a lesson. Let's um, fake date. Let's pretend like we hit it off we are in this relationship, we're super in love. And then at their party next month, let's have a, like a big violent breakup at their party and like teach them a lesson about meddling in like love lives of others. So that's the premise of the book. Um, but of course, like as they're fake dating, they actually get to know each other and they fall in love. Like not a spoiler, that's, that's how romance works. Um, anyway, it was great, love it check out Chloe Lee's. There's a second book um, in this series featuring her sister and I'm going to read that and I can't wait. So then I read, hmm, I'm going to skip over like a couple just because I don't feel like editing. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to, I don't want to have to put a bunch of like book, book pictures in. <laughs> so, okay. New release, Allie Hazelwood Bride. Oh my God. This book is I have not seen one person with, like, say they did not love this book. Not just that they liked it. Everybody has loved this book and I am included in everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean all the like book reviewers I watch on Instagram or on YouTube, like have loved this book. So this is a brand new book. It just came out in February. Um, so Allie Hazelwood writes contemporary romance and she writes women in STEM. So she wrote, like her most popular book was The Love Hypothesis, which I loved. I've loved all of her books. I own them all. Um, but this was uh, her first foray into paran paranormal romance. So this features a vampire and a werewolf who have an arranged marriage, to, like form an alliance between their like warring um, species. And then they like, you know, they fall in love. But this was so good. It was just... It was so fun because it was like paranormal fantasy, but it reads like a fun, quirky, easy contemporary romance. So um, I know that style can be like jarring for some people, but it, it just worked. It really worked with this book. Um, so it was just, it was funny. It was compelling. It was easy to read. It was steamy. It was great. And you got like vampires and werewolves super cool. So I absolutely loved it. Highly recommend. I have not heard one person who did not love this book. If you're the one, you can tell me about it in the comments, but I'm not going to agree with you because I thought it was great. Um, okay. So then I read a super silly book. <laughs> um, this is that time I got drunk and saved a demon. This is Kimberly Lemming. So I've seen these books all over Instagram because they have these like super silly titles. So the second book is that time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf. And the third one is that time I got drunk and saved a human. So I, these are just, you can tell these are very like tongue in cheek, silly romance, right? But is that cover not gorgeous? Is that not one of the most beautiful book covers you've ever seen? It's stunning. Um, so anyway, these are, these books, oh my gosh, they're, they're, do not take themselves seriously. They read like silly fan fiction. They might've been silly fan fiction that then got published. I don't know the whole backstory, but, um, it features <laughs> the main character, Cinnamon is like a spice farmer and, um, her little village like is near a temple of a goddess and um, there are demons that like the goddess keeps at bay um, and protects like the towns uh, from. But one of the demons shows up in her town, like they get entangled 
and they end up having to go on like a little quest and then they fall in love, right? So it was just, it did not take itself seriously again. It's super silly, um, but fun. Like it's a, it's a, a nice frolicking little adventure and, and very um, steamy, spicy scenes. And um, one thing I will say, I do not mind, but I could see how like some of the low ratings for this book I know are because it's set in this kind of like quaint little village, like feels like more like medieval type, you know, setting, but the characters use like modern slang. Um, so they talk like, and not just like a little bit of modern slang, but like very modern slang. So it's a little bit jarring to have this like high fantasy medieval setting with like, you know, these silly phrases. I didn't mind. And if you don't mind that, it's, it's a good time. It's not the best thing I ever read. No. Super fun though. Super good time. And again, how beautiful, like literally as I was reading it, like every couple pages, I would stop and just like stare at the cover art. I think it's just so pretty. It's stunning. So I think I'm going to get the next two books because I just, I loved it. I loved it. All right. There's one book I'm going to talk about that I don't have a physical copy because it's so good. It's probably my favorite thing I've read this year so far. And so I got to talk about it. And you've probably been seeing this book all over the place because it's super popular right now. Um, it's been popular, but like right now it's having a, a moment. And I've seen this book on shelves at Target and Walmart recently. So you've probably seen it. It's Butcher and Blackbird by Bren Weaver. Like I said, I heard about this book like six months ago. And I heard the audiobook was like the way to go with this book. And so um, during an audible sale, I grabbed, I, I, it was on sale for like $4.99. So I grabbed it. And I'm so glad I did. So I decided to read it. I buddy read this with, um, with a friend, but we both like just absolutely ate this book up. It is so good. So this is a contemporary dark romance. So it features, it's two serial killers, but <laughs> They're like vigilante serial killers. Like they, they go kill like other serial killers or like child molesters. Like they go after bad guys, but they are serial killers. Um, and they end up like entangled with each other and they end up in a little bit of a competition about like who can catch like the next bad guy first. So they're meeting up like yearly and having this little competition um, and they're like falling for each other. And it's one of those where it's like, he falls first. Like he is like down bad for this woman. And she's like, I'm not sure if I'm going to give him the time of day. Um, but it was so good. It's absolutely hysterical. It's completely unhinged. There is some really graphic, like gore and like ickiness that happens because, because there's, you know, there's like a Hannibal Lecter kind of like character. So like you give some descriptions that you're kind of like, Ooh, but they're, they're usually pretty quick. You can get through them. Um, but it is hilarious. It's totally addictive. I can see why this book is so popular and is so hyped up right now because it is such a good time. It is so fun. Um, we were literally like just screaming through this book. Like, oh my God, this book is so jaw dropping. Like it was so good. Absolutely my favorite thing I've read this year. So if you don't mind a little dark romance <laughs> with your serial, serial killer, like happily ever after, um, I highly recommend this and I do recommend the audiobook. I think just reading the physical book would be perfectly fine. But the audiobook is done so well. If you can get a hold of the audiobook or, you know, splurge on it or whatever. I mean, I got it for $4.99, so I didn't feel like I had to splurge on it. But um, if you can get the audiobook, it's so good. The two narrators actually, so there's two point of views, um, the male character and the female character. And they had two narrators. And they actually re recorded their scenes like in the same room together. So generally, 
even when a book has two narrators like that, when like, let's say it's the guy's point of view, and he's like, you know, doing his chapter, when he does um, the dialogue, he'll do like an imitation of a female voice. Um, and then when like the female character is doing her chapter, she'll do an imitation of the male voice. Um, and sometimes those don't match up quite in the same style and it can be very jarring. But for this book, whenever there was dialogue, they actually had both narrators doing the dialogue. So they weren't having to voice act the other character. Um, and they were just two fabulous narrators, like just the tone and inflection and the energy was like so good. And then to have them doing that dialogue together just really took this book to the next level. So definitely recommend the audiobook if you can do it. But I still think even if you can't, even if you just like pick up the paperback at Target, I think you're gonna have a great time. It was such a great book. Highly recommend. One book left. <laughs> I'm so hot. Okay. Um, so I continued on the Neon Gods, um, or the I think it's called the Gods of Olympus. What is what is this series? I don't know. It's by Katie Robert. The first one's called Neon Gods. Dark Olympus. It's called the Dark Olympus series. So this is, there have been one, two, three, four. This was the fifth book. And then the six books out, I actually have it. Some, it's over here. Um, I need to read it. The sixth book just came out. So Katie Robert writes Dark Romance and she churns these things out. Like I swear, I think there's been at least two a year. So they, you don't have to wait long for these, these books. Um, so they're dark romance. They're based on, um, like the gods of Olympus, but there isn't like a, there's not really a lot of like magic or, um, fantasy to these. These are like normal people in like a modern Athens, but they do hold the, the titles of the gods, but it's more like they're like government officials almost. So it's like Zeus is like the president, you know, and then like, Aphrodite and Athena and all these other gods are like council members is, is kind of the, the vibe. Um, the first book is a Hades and Persephone uh, retelling. And then all the books after that have featured like different, different characters. And they're just, they're, they're basically erotica, like Katie Robert writes smut. They're, they're smut books, <laughs> but they have a little bit of plot. And what I think she does so well is she has she really does a good balance between like plot and smut to where you're not just like sex scene after sex scene after sex scene and like that's all it is like but the plots aren't like so convoluted and detailed that you're like really committed like they're they're very they're easy breezy easy breezy reads but they're super smutty and steamy and they're really fun. They're short. They're always like around 300 or 350 pages. Just quick reads. Great time. And what I love about Katie Robert, and I've said this before, and I've said this to friends, but like, she is such an amazing person. Like she's on her social media, like she will stand up for like human rights, um, injustices, but she also will like represent and stand up for people like in the like authors in the book community, reviewers in the book community. Like, I just feel like she's always like on the right side of, of issues um, and willing to use her platform to speak up, but also just like a really cool, like radical person. Um, and her books are always like, always have queer characters. And I feel like, and she, she takes like, she takes that very seriously with like sensitivity readers and making sure like, she's doing it right um she's queer herself but like just making sure that like you know she's representing things correctly and being respectful um but she it, she explores polyamory um like non-traditional pairings throuples uh, it yeah <laughs> there's there's a lot going on in these books but they're always like fun and sexy she always like addresses consent and safe sex in her books, which I think is super awesome. Um, and does it like in a fun, sexy way. And I just love her. Like we stand for Katie Robert on this channel. I will buy every book she releases and I have.
I think. I think I bought every single one. Like, a lot of them are on Kindle Unlimited and I still buy them because I love her and I support her and she does release a lot of books. <laughs> but I buy them because I think she's amazing. So, um, I highly recommend this series. And my favorite so far is, um, was Wicked Beauty. But this one was also really good. I've loved all of them. And this one, I was especially excited because the dedication says to everyone who loves mess, this one's for you. It was awesome. Cruel Seduction, um, Neon Gods, Dark Olympus series by Katie Robert. Love it. Recommend it. All right, that's it. That's all the books. I'm going to go have my second coffee of the day. <laughs> no, not of the day, of the afternoon. It'll be like my fifth coffee of the day. I'm going to go have some coffee and then I'm going to edit this and I'll get this uploaded and I don't know why I just suddenly don't know how to end this video. All right, I'm going to go. Bye.